It's the Garage Guys Report. Motorsports news for you. Welcome to episode 11 of the Garage Guys Report. Motorsports news for you. I'm your host, Chase Holden. And we're about to get ready to dive into this past week in motorsports. Before we do that, have some announcements that I want to give out. I want to let the world know, Mr. July has been crowned. We've crowned a Garage Guys Hotline Caller of the Month, the first one ever. You are the one that voted. You are the one that chose. And you have all chosen Hunter from Arkansas to represent as the first Garage Guys Report, Hotline Caller of the Month, Mr. July. Round of applause for Hunter from Arkansas. We're going to hear from him on our voicemail segment on this episode. You already know that this episode is brought to you by Hooters right now. If you download the Hooters app, go to order.hooters.com, place an order, use promo code GARAGEGUYS. You're going to save $10 on any $30 or more to go order. When you order from Hooters, it's just an, it's another way the Garage Guys help you save. Just had to get that out the way. Had to say that. Love Hooters. It's a shame for Chase Elliott. We're going to talk about that, though. We're going to talk about Chase and his journey in the playoffs because Kip Richards is back this week. The official Garage Guys analysis soar. Might do a little breakdown of something uh, with old Bill's boy this week. Something that a, a lot of... Twitter fans or X fans, whatever you want to call that shit now, been talking about how he can get in the playoffs. Going to dive into that. Obviously, got to talk about Chris Busher going back to back in Michigan. Insane. All that's going to be covered and more. Uh, so, we have partnered up with the one and only NASCAR on NBC. This is a little prize pack here. Inside this prize pack is a lanyard, a koozie, a decal, and a pair of of NASCAR on NBC, USA, Peacock, sunglasses. And I'm giving five of them away. And the way that you're going to be able to win this is by simply liking this video, subscribing to the channel, dropping a comment, I want my NBC, hashtag NASCAR, one of the two will work. And, uh, and share the video with your friends. Let them know about the Garage Guys Report, the number one motorsports news show on the internet, because I said so. Just just believe it. I'm excited to be giving these away, though. We'll have some more stuff as well. They gave me a really awesome glass as well. NASCAR on NBC glass here. Might might have to give one or two of those away, too. Who knows? That's why you got to stay tuned. That's why you got to stay in the know with everything that's happening on the Garage Guys report. But now that we have the announcements out the way, the giveaway is out the way, remember, like, Share, subscribe, comment, I want my NBC, or comment hashtag NASCAR, whichever works best for you. That's how you can be entered for a chance to win one of the five of those NBC prize packs. But no more time to waste. Time for the news! To kick off this past weekend in motorsports, we have to honor the winners of the series of races where drivers found a way to the checkered flag. Here are the series, here are the drivers, here are your winners of the week. Round of applause for the winners. They did it. They won the race. They won the race that they wanted to win. They got it, and they made it happen. Congratulations. We're proud of you. We're proud of you. The biggest one of all we got to be proud of, right, is Chris Busher back-to-back on a Monday. On a Monday. Everybody thought it was going to be Martin, and he came through in that car that he sold his soul to Satan for. Ain't no way that car was legal. I don't care what they say. 
That thing was fast, man. It was crazy. I don't know. I was just as surprised, honestly. I feel like a lot of people were pretty shocked about the Chris Buescher win. I know that I was kind of one of them. But I was a little more shocked in the fact that we didn't have enough Harvick talismans created. For some reason, you guys didn't want to believe. And for that, it's really hard to turn a Ford tractor on a racetrack into a winning machine without the power of dozens and dozens of individuals making talismans for Kevin Harvick. So, yeah. That's okay, though. No more magic tricks and spells for me this year. I have to focus because we're going to finish this season with a winning NASCAR betting record, and it starts next week in Indianapolis. I'm done losing. I'm done trying to teach spells and, and majestics or whatever the fuck that word might be. I'm done. I'm over it. But uh, shout out to anybody that did bet on Chris Buescher. I know we had some live slips I saw on the Discord, which is free. Discord's free, just by the way, in case you didn't know. Uh, but not only was it an amazing back-to-back -back win, uh, five straight for Ford at Michigan, and RFK making history with 14 wins from six different drivers. It's pretty fucking big. There was also a gigantic narrative that I missed. And then I feel like a lot of you might have missed. Chris Buescher went to Richmond and Michigan and won both of them back to back. Last year, Kevin Harvick did the same thing. Why didn't we think about it? I know the answer. It's because we don't want to believe that Chris Buescher can win more than one race in a year. But that's why we have to remember this is 2023. It's time we stop thinking like Neanderthals in NASCAR and we start thinking like 2023 NASCAR fans and saying this is what's happening right now, paying attention to that, making that the priority of maybe some of these bets that we're going to be making moving forward. Not getting too hung up in the data, too hung up in all the things that are happening or have happened. We're going to focus on what's happening now going in to the 2023 playoffs. That's where the heads are at. That's where the money's going to be at. That's where the NAS bag is going to come from. I'm ready for it. So no harm, no foul for not making your Harvick talismans if you didn't. And if you did, hell yeah, you were a real one. And I know who you are. Also, I think it's a great time for us to go ahead and bring up another elephant in the room uh, with the NASCAR Cup Series. A lot of NASCAR Twitter people have been asking about Chase Elliott. Will he make the playoffs? Can he make it on points? Does he have to win a race? What's going to happen? Chase can't miss the playoffs. Bill's boy's got himself in a pickle. It's a tough one. Even the media doesn't know if he can make it in. They're asking him. I mean, were you surprised when it when it went? Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Just what do you feel about your prospects of you know winning once and then now the next uh, these final? It's the only option. It's a tough time. But fear not. Because Kip Richards is back on the Garage Guys report. He makes his return today. He's going to break down how Chase Elliott can make it into the 2023 NASCAR Cup Series Championship. Here we go. The man himself. Man of the hour. The root beer man himself. Whatever you want to call him. I'm just fucking happy he's back. It's Kip Richards. Yes, it is I, Kip Richards. Driver of the number 100 Purple Pontiac for Team Pangas, representing the Team Pangas name. I have returned to the Garage Guys report as the official Garage Guys report analysis source on Kip's Court. I am happy to be back, and I'm also happy to be back drinking Barks because Barks has fights. <laughs> We're here to discuss Chase Elliott and his potential for missing the 2023 NASCAR Cup Series plan. I, for one, have a plan for Bill's book to be able to take his talents to the top in the 2023 Championship Cup race. First off, there's no way Chase can make it on point. As you can see here, these are numbers I do not think my calculating numbers. But what I have learned in my time racing in the NASCAR Cup Series is that you have to be a sneaky boy. 
One piece of advice I can give to Chase Elliott to make it all the way to Phoenix is to be a sneaky boy. How can he be a sneaky boy, Kip? Well, here's a little tip for advice for Chase. We have road courses approaching and Daytona International Speedway. At Daytona, things might get a little crazy. You can never tell what will happen then. Could he win? Yeah. Could he wreck his car? Yeah. But at the road courses, he has the best chance to be superior and the true star and golden boy of NASCAR. Three drivers really caught my attention and I decided to let Chase know that these are the three drivers he should target to ensure that they get out of the way to secure his race up. When we take a look here at Kyle Larson, what is one way Kyle Larson could not run a road course race and challenge Chase Elliott? All he would need to do is tell Larson, hey, I think you have a dirt race starting very soon. He would probably just drive straight off the track to the dirt race because he'd much rather be dirt racing. It's the honest truth. Secondly, with Tyler Reddick, a.k.a. Red Dot, I've been told that there have been some woes on pit road, that the 2311 pit crew for the 45 team cannot get it together for Tyler to succeed. Chase would have to do nothing to Tyler other than simply watch him drive down pit road into the tent of his thing. Lastly, new star has emerged from the road course scene coming out of New Zealand, Mr. Shane Van Gisbert. Shane Van Gisbert offers a giant flip to Chase Elliott driving in the 91 track house car. What is one way Chase Elliott could be a sneaky boy with SVG? Well, for starters, he could take a note from my playbook. When Laura Burton once put a snake inside of my car at Daytona, it was a very naughty trick, Lord. But I will say, this is a prime opportunity to turn tragedy into potential friendship. All Chase must do before the race is to place a small animal inside of SVG car. My advice to Chase would be to either use the skink, which is a small lizard-like creature from New Zealand, or maybe a more popular choice with the common crunch tail puffer. Either way, one of these animals crawling up SBG's leg while driving the race car could cause some major problems on the track. And all Chase would have to do is simply tell him, I just thought it would make you more comfortable here in America, driving an American stock car. No one can be mad at you for trying to hit. Those are my thoughts on how Chase Elliott can make it to the 2023 playoffs by being a sneaky boy. And more will come next week on Kip's Corner on the Garage Guys Report because I am back officially from Alaska. Where in the <laughs> did my bar sleep here go? Informative stuff right there, Kip. Thanks so much. Now on to a little bit more serious news in the NASCAR Cup Series. The biggest story of the week was without a doubt Noah Gragson getting suspended from Legacy Motor Club after his Instagram account showed that he had liked a meme back in May of 2023 making fun of George Floyd, and I'm guessing it was from his death. I put a tweet out earlier in the week kind of talking about the generality because the situation just kind of brought up the feelings that I have about how things happen when certain things happen like this. There's really not a clear way for me to say this, so I'm just going to be straight up about it all and about how I feel. And I, and I've, I thought about it. I tried to put it in the best words that I could without going – because I'll go down rabbit holes on this stuff – when it comes to these kind of topics, I'm very sensitive. I want to make sure that I, I, I let you know exactly what I think and how I feel. And 
unfortunately, I can't do that on this show. I would have to sit with you for like an hour or two and break everything down fraction by fraction. That's just how my brain works. And it's the best way for me to convey exactly the way I see and feel in these situations. Um, I'll say this much. Do I think that it sucks that you can do something and I'm, I'm going to assume that it was a giant mistake. I know Noah. Uh, I know the kind of person Noah is. He's a fun guy to be around. And I know that he just made a gigantic mistake here. Uh, I, I can say that with confidence, and I know he knows that as well. And what I can hope is that he educates himself on the matters at hand, especially with everything that had to do with George Floyd, BLM, really understand and see why a lot of people did not appreciate that. Even though he didn't say anything, him just liking it is a big enough uh, wow factor. And obviously so, because he was suspended, Josh Berry took over his car in Michigan. Um, It's a tough spot for Noah to be in. It's the reality of it. Do I personally feel like someone should lose their entire livelihood for making these kind of mistakes? No, I don't. And I'll say that because there's a lot of context that goes on with saying that. And maybe one day I will make a video really digging into it all and really trying to keep everything formulated in the best way possible. I'm, I'm wanting to do it right now so bad, but I know we don't have time on the show. Do I think that Noah liking that meme was okay? No, I watched the meme. I don't find it funny, and I do feel like if you have a humor that is looked at that way. I'm not in any place to judge, but I would say that maybe look at some other comedy stylings. Maybe really ask yourself, what makes this funny to me? You might have some digging to do as a human being. Uh, That's the way that I look at it. I uh, personally, I want to see Noah overcome this I want to see him learn from this I want to see him grow from this as a human and I want to see him moving on in his career to bigger and better things and in order for that to happen we have to be able to forgive we have to be able to uh, move on from this and that goes for everybody in the in the situations I mean we saw what happened with Kyle Larson a couple years ago Um, he took the necessary time to educate himself on the matters at hand to grow as a person. He came back, he won a championship. Things are going great for him. I think that can happen for Noah as well. Um, so really that's all there is to say about it. And I think that with my tweet, if you did see my tweet that went out, that was basically talking about, you know, how you can dig something up. If you don't like somebody, all that is true. And there are malicious people out there that will do that. And that will take advantage of you if you're vulnerable even if they know who you are as a person and you know I wasn't perfect I've never been perfect and I'm not perfect now but I'm a hell of a lot better than I used to be and I feel like a lot of you can agree with that statement it's our job as humans to learn and grow and we have to have each other's backs in that process and help each other to understand certain things uh, if we're deemed uh, you know in the wrong on certain stuff I certainly don't want to hurt anyone's feelings I know the kind of person Noah is. I don't think he would want that either. And I know a lot of you that are watching this and a lot of other people out there in the world, you know, we just got to find a way to come together, support each other, educate each other, help each other. We're all humans and we're all here on this ball floating through the galaxy that is floating through endless space and time. And there's nothing we can do about that. So we might as well try our best to, uh, to help each other, love each other and grow with one another. And that's where I'll end that. So I hope for the best for all parties involved. And uh, that's that. Moving on from all the NASCAR news, uh, we got to take a look over at dirt and late model action. That's right. A little bit of dirt, a little bit of late model, a little bit of Bowman Gray. There was some crazy stuff that went down. There were some great finishes in the dirt races this weekend. Uh, the Knox 360 Knoxville Nationals, the Ironman 55, and the Wu Nationals at Cedar Lake. I want you to take a look at this video showing these tight finishes at these racetracks in triple form. This all happened over the weekend. These finishes, amazing finishes. This is all happening in Dirt Series right now, guys. Take a look.
Final time, they race off into turn number one. Reitzel has it, here comes Brian Brown. White flag down the back, should be the final time. They're side by side for the lead in the championship. To the bottom, Reitzel slides up across. Brown will turn the car off of turn four. It'll be a drag race to the checkers. Who's it gonna be? Brian Brown gets him at the line. Brian Brown wins the 360 Knoxville Nationals. Point zero two zero seconds, Brian. 21 over Aaron Wright, so he we go over and him third. To the bottom. Wow! She worked back underneath him as they take the white flag side by side. Logan Shuhart slides Larson as he gets into the cushion. Back straight away for the final time. They'll race for the win in the Ironman 55. Kyle Larson slides Logan Shuhart. Shuhart crosses back underneath him, but Kyle Larson gets the win. Kyle Larson drives Shuhart up the banking. Logan tries to cross back underneath him, but Kyle Larson wins it by 16 one hundredths of a second. Down the back straightaway. Hudson O'Neill's right there in the one. Does he have one more effort? Slide jump for the win. $50,000. Pierce hits the wall. Crowd to their feet at the line. It's going to be the smooth operator, Bobby Pierce. The smooth operator by a margin of victory, 0 0.073. I just want to know who put Seth Rogen in the booth for that last one with the late model dirt cars. A thousand percent sounded like Seth Rogen. Just saying. But pretty awesome finishes right there. I thought it was cool. And then this video was brought to my attention as well from a race at Bowman Gray over the weekend. Uh, it was on the NASCAR Roots account as well. Burt Myers throws Speedy Dry at Chris Fleming. Take a look. In number 16, and Chris Fleming's on the outside, though. Oh, and the 16's going to go around into the wall. Burt Myers. Burt Myers in the fence. Busted left front. Race is over. Fans are all on their feet here at Bowman Gray with all kinds of thoughts about that. I see claps. I see angry fans. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Burt Myers completely takes a bucket out of the back of that golf cart. Man, he poker faced that and threw it on to the number 16 of Chris Fleming. As you can see it on the front, sand, kitty litter, everything onto the 16 car. Burt Myers unhappy with Chris Fleming. You can call it speedy dry. You can call it dirt. That was fucking kitty litter. <laughs> you don't throw kitty litter in a dude's car, bro. And if you get kitty litter thrown in your car, I don't care if you were in the wrong for a wreck or in the right for a wet wreck. If a dude throws kitty litter at your car on a racetrack, you better get out and punch. <laughs> I, I didn't get to see the end. If that dude didn't get out and punch or they didn't have some kind of confrontation, like you need to just go home, dude. No, it's, don't let a grown man throw kitty litter at your race car. Jesus Christ. Crazy. There was no F1 race this weekend, but in the F1 world, there was a little bit of news. Pat McAfee had Tony Stewart on his show this past week, and the topic of Formula One came up in the beginning of their interview when he was comparing the major auto racing series in our world today with Tony. Take a listen at what Pat had to say about Formula uh. IndyCar, they're going 230. Almost 230 now, yeah. 230 miles an hour. Uh, different style of racing. NASCAR going 199. Right. About 200, right? Yep. So two different speeds. F1 going, what, what are they doing? Uh, I think the fastest they go is like 190, 185, 190. Mm. I want to let you know. Just... As a, this is not even me taking a stand for like Indiana now that I'm an Indiana resident and everything like that. Oh. My wife and her family, massive IndyCar fans. That F1 thing, I don't understand how people like it. It's a shame. It is so fucking good. Mm -hmm. like, it, it is, you, you probably can't say you don't want to start up. You're probably racing. <laughs> are going to go race over there. But I don't like that style of racing. I enjoy IndyCar. I enjoy NASCAR. One of us. One of us. One of us. Pat McAfee is one of us. Thank God. Thank God somebody understands it. Somebody in that light on the major sports stage of sports talk understands that F1 sucks, dude. It fucking blows, bro. And I'm so glad that that was said on that interview. Smoke was on there. It was an awesome interview as, w as well. Go check that out right now on Pat McAfee stuff. But, you know, I've always liked Pat. And this just made it even better. I'll never forget the April Fool's prank. I had everybody in the world thinking I was going to be the NASCAR correspondent on the Pat McAfee show. Pat himself 
even tweeted about it. It was a great time. Uh, you know, never forget the April Fool's joke of 2020. Great times. Pat McAfee, stand-up guy. Thank you, guys. Uh, let's go to voicemails. This week on voicemails, we obviously have to kick things off by honoring Mr. July Hunter from Arkansas, a.k.a. Casey Raysom. He will be our first voicemail. Uh, I guess it would be his acceptance speech. And uh, however he felt about this past weekend in motorsports. As always, you know the number to call to get on this show every week has not changed. It's the same. 919-769-4477. Just call that number after the NASCAR Cup Series race. Give me your thoughts, your opinions, your hot takes, your questions, anything you can think of. Call it in. Leave the voicemail. It will be on the show. And we're going to get ready to decide who uh, our hotline caller of the month for August will be, too. So make them count. But let's go ahead and get it started with Hunter, a.k.a. Casey Raysom from Arkansas, a.k.a. now Mr. July. What's up? This is Hunter from Arkansas, a.k.a. Casey Raysom. I just got to say, first off, thank you for everyone that voted for me. We we went out of the gate fast with the votes, but not as fast as that Xfinity 10G Internet. We went out really fast, really hard, got the votes, and full out one caller of the month. Thank you to everyone that voted for me. Second off, I'd like to give my uh, Casey Raysom non-race winning shout-out. To Jordan Anderson racing in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, Parker Retzloff and Jeff Burden both each got a top 10 finish. Great run for Jordan Anderson racing. And also, let's go to Nashville now. Can't spell Kyle Kirkwood without the W. And first off, we're loving Chris Buescher today. He got rid of the Monday Morton, who we said he sold his soul to Satan to win some Monday races. Chris Buescher out, full out, out drove, out ran, and full out beat Monday Martin today. Monday Martin can't win all of them. Just remember that. Let me just say one more thing. I'm going to step on the sideline a little bit. I don't think I should. I'm going to run for back to back caller of the month, and I don't think it's fair for me to run back to back. I'm going to go to the sideline a little bit. Just for this month, I'm Casey Raysom or Hunter from Arkansas, whatever you want to call me, and I'm out till next uh, till the next report. I will see y'all next time. There he is. There you have it, Mr. July, Hotline Caller of the Month on the Garage Guys Report. Hunter, you can't go to the sideline, dog. You're the star of the show now. You you're, you're kicking us off every week, Casey Raysom, giving us the goods. Filling in the gaps of the things I didn't discuss in detail. We appreciate you. Hunter will have a uh, commemorative video, and he will get a commemorative coin sent to him, and his name is forever etched in Garage Guys Report history now as Mr. July. So, one more time, round of applause for Hunter, a.k.a. Casey Raysom from Arkansas. Mr. July, we appreciate it. Now, continuing our voicemails, we're going to go to one of the runner-ups from July, who is obviously what we'll see. We'll see if he's going to compete for August. We'll find out. We'll find out for everybody here. There's going to be some new names entered. Who knows? Can't wait to hear what we have. But this is a guy that's been calling week in and week out. He ran for Mr. July. He was going for Hotline Call of the Month. I'm sure he's going again. It's Brady from Mississippi. What's up, Chase? It's Brady from Mississippi. It has been a long weekend, man. Uh, Saturday night, about 11 o'clock, I felt this feeling. And I said, i got to go down to the coast, to the casino. Drove to the Beau Rivage, played some sports, uh, you know, played some bets. None of them hit. Played a lot of video poker, ripped some cigs. Didn't get back into town until about 4. Um, started the race on Sunday whatever bad day i was tired woke up today you know waiting for the race to start i get a call from my congressman it's a really long story to explain why my congressman was calling me 
but it was a productive conversation. We're making big moves. Um, other than that, man, I think RFK is back. That's all I really got for this weekend. Oh, one last thing. I want to congratulate Hunter from Arkansas for being Mr. July, a.k.a. Casey Racing. But least garage fam, not forget that Brady from Mississippi is a certified Winston Gold Pack caller. It's all for this weekend. I'm out. Brady hitting him with that certified Winston Gold Pack caller from BWB days. Let's go, Brady. What a call. You left us hanging with like a little bit of a cliffhanger there with the congressman call, though, Brady. I want to know what you and your congressman are discussing. Sounds uh, sounds interessante, but uh, I feel you on the losing bets part. We're not going to feel that way much longer. Brady, always a good sport, a great runner-up. We'll, we'll probably be in contention. He calls every week. He's got to be in contention. He's got interesting things, interesting things to say. Thank you, Brady. Appreciate it. Winston Goldpack caller. Blast from the past. All right, we're going to go now to Cousin Vinny from New Jersey. Yo, GGC. This is your cousin Vinny from North Jersey. I just want to talk about two guys real quick. Martin Truex Jr., my fellow statesman. What, what? On fire? And Joey Logano, my other guy, the Yankees. You know what I mean? From Connecticut. What's he doing? Championship last year. Did they lose the playbook? Come on. Let me know, Gigi. Talk to me. Cousin Vinny, thanks for calling. I feel like I've got like a like a like a personal like um uh, like a godfather now. Like somebody I, I converse with, like I give them advice, give them answers. Like when I when I'm imagining Vinny in my head, at first I go for Joe Pesci, but now I'm thinking more Robert Brando. I like this. Cousin Vinny, keep calling. Uh yeah, man. It's it's pretty wild, dude. I, I don't know what to say. I bet on Joey Logano. You know, he's gotta get his head on right. We need some more Joseph L energy. If he can't provide the Joseph L. energy for us, then he needs to kick rocks. Maybe take the fake hair off his head. Uh, You know, be the man that he already is. Something's got to give. I will say that. One win early on in the year at Atlanta, it's not going to cut it for old Joseph. Not Joseph L. Martin Truex. Dude, he sold his soul to Satan for that car today, and he still couldn't get it done. It just goes to show that a lot can happen on the railroads Maybe maybe there was something that happened in the railroads up in Jersey. Maybe you know some things about the railroads. I won't go too deep into it. I'm not going to talk. I, I, you know, hey, 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 hey. I, I don't want to get too deep into conversations about what happens at railroads in New Jersey. But I will say that I'm glad you called. I hope those answers help. And I hope you call in again. Cousin Vinny from New Jersey. Great guy. Stand-up guy. Uh, we're going to go now to Discord Trevor. What's up, y'all? Discord Trevor calling from the great state of Virginia. Just wanted to say Jack Roush has his swagger back and fuck Denny Hamlin. Classic. Thanks for calling, Trevor. You can always count on the fuck Denny Hamlin from Discord Trevor. He always comes in hot. Uh, also, been been hitting them MLB parlays with my boy Discord Trevor. We're trying to get hot. We're trying to get the bats warm. Talking to Joe Boo. Joe Boo warms bats. Shout out. Thanks for calling, Trevor. Keep calling. Uh, we're going to go now to uh, one of the guys uh, from my Instagram lives. Been in there before. Pretty sure he's in the Discord. It's the doctor. Hey, buddy. It's been a while. Uh, doctor calling back. Uh, a couple things going on here. One, how do we feel about the chase going in the situation of playoffs, having to win a race? Uh, where do you think it's going to be? Number two, I mean, how awesome was the freaking race today? Finally, all the cars are getting speed. There's equality racing on the track. It looks great. Sounds great. Great vibe, I thought. And three, kind of a little off, off topic, but uh, when you guys want to go back doing some lives, man, miss interacting with you. But other than that, I uh, hope you guys had a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. With the hardcore cord phone hang-up, it's the doctor. Told you guys I met the doctor on Instagram live. 
And he asked about it right there in the end. Doctor, thanks so much for calling, man. Glad to hear from you. It is, it is good to hear from you. And uh, a lot more lives have been happening, but they're happening on playback.tv slash garage, guys. That's where we're doing a lot of that content now. Um, I'll, I'll kick it around on some Instagram and TikTok lives here and there. The NASBETS live era was fun. Uh, but I've really focused the energy over to playback now. So hopefully you'll come join us there, doctor. Uh, playback.tv slash garage guys. Some good questions. Uh, starting off with the Chase Elliott into the playoffs thing. You know, Kip Richards had his thoughts. You know, if, if you if you want to plot and scheme, go with Kip Richards. You know, but if we're being realistic about it, I mean, it just comes down to the simple fact that he has to win. Do I feel good personally that he'll get a win at a road course? Not really. I mean, you look at what's happened since the next-gen era with Chase in this car, the closest road course race that he had to win was the Glen. So it is coming up. There is the chance for that to happen again, for him to get that. And I want to believe that he will get that one. I do want to believe it, but it just seems very predictable. And in a year where nothing has been predictable, it worries me a little bit. So we'll see what happens. I just can't imagine a world where Chase Elliott does not make the playoffs. If anything, he's going to be riding high at Daytona if he doesn't get a win at one of these tracks that we are about to be visiting here very soon. But thanks again for calling. And as you mentioned with Michigan, fantastic racing, all bets aside. Right there towards the end when Busher and Truex and Truex got a little wobbly. Oh, my God. Edge of your seat shit right there, man. Fantastic product, fantastic racing as we're getting towards the playoffs. Couldn't be happier. Thank you, Doctor. We're going to move now to Eddie from New Jersey. Let's see if Eddie can carry the swag of Cousin Vinny. We'll find out. Hi, um, I'm Eddie, again, from New Jersey. All I want to say is this race was incredible. It had everything. It had tires going out sometimes. Um Passes for the lead, incredible. Four wide, maybe three wide, maybe even five wide in the turns, in the straights. But this race had everything. Pit stops, everything, <laughs> strategy. But congratulations to Chris Buescher. He deserves this win after last week's back, <laughs> last week's win at Richmond. But this race had everything. And Truex... <laughs> I'll say he got robbed, but at the same time, he, he either he had jet engines underneath that hood, or he's doing the Michael Washup thing when, at Daytona, so jet jet fuel in his car. But he had a really fast car either way. But Chris Bush is your winner. I'm happy. We're all happy. I won myself a whole bunch of money, so I'm, I'm fucking ha happy for that. And I'm drunk. Got something to eat. Got to see my favorite driver win. And that's all I got to say. But this race was incredible. There, uh, there were some parts where it was like a snooze fest. But like other than that peak, this is higher than last last race. And I'll see you all later. So, bye-bye. Appreciate the call, Eddie. I'm glad you got some food. After you got drunk, and I'm glad you enjoyed the race. And I'm glad your favorite driver won, and you won money. It's huge. Appreciate the call, Eddie. Uh, let's go now to help from Herb. Yo, what's up, Chase? This is Herb. First time caller, long time fan of the whole Garage Guy fam. Y'all are killing it. Love the content. You guys are just the best. Got my shirt a couple days ago, rocking it hard, and came through with the bags today. I wish everybody could be a winner, but with these bills on the horizon, the Boosh man came to save the day two weeks in a row. Didn't go as heavy this week as last, because I didn't even think two weeks in a row, but something stuck out about Ford, so I was on him and the hard man. Harv couldn't pull it through. Talisman, come on, y'all. Step up your game. We need those. But, hey, we still got some races left. If Chase, the homie, asks y'all to do it again, come on, let's step it up. We got this. Anyway, I'm stoked on Boucher. Herb's going to celebrate. 
no drinks, but I'll find something to do. Don't you guys worry. Hit a 50 to 1, actually I think two of them, and then uh, about a half a handful of Ford props. And then I was doing a couple on Truex Live, but too rich for my blood, so I actually nailed Boucher one more time, and this time came through. So stoked. Hope there were some other winners out there, but hey, on to the next one. We rolling! Garage Guy Herb out. With the name change at the end of the call, Garage Guy Herb, he's here. I love it. I love that energy, Herb. I, I love you helping to tell everybody watching this that when I tell you to make a talisman, you fucking make it. Because it don't work if there ain't enough people to do it. But I appreciate you calling, Herb. I'm glad you won money on Chris Busher. Obviously, you were in the playback. I love that. Keep calling, man. First time caller. First time caller of the show. First time caller of the program. Love that. That's Herb. Shout out to him. All right, we're going to go now to Jackie from Boston. A lot, lot of East Coast calls on this show. Here's Jackie from Boston. What's going on, Chase? What's going on, Garage Fam? Jackie from Boston on this Monday afternoon. I'll keep it brief. I'm heading to work right now. But I have a conspiracy theory, so everybody get out their tinfoil hat. So it's very interesting that this news about Noah and this alleged meme with a crab comes out in the morning on Sunday. Or was it Saturday? It was Saturday. Comes out on Saturday. And allegedly, Martin Truex Jr. signed his extension that night, the night before. The rumors of John Hunter replacing Noah in the legacy car, I just think it's a little, it's a little coincidental. I don't think it's all happenstance or what have you, but I just think that, you know, Toyota's doing some shady things behind the scene that I do not support, and that's why I find it hard to root for anybody in a Toyota. All right. Have a good one, everybody. See you later. Jackie from Boston. He cut himself off there at the end. Definitely the tinfoil hat will pull that out. It it is it is something. And I've heard I've heard about it. I've heard about the conspiracy theory. The theory is that with Truex staying with Joe Gibbs, John Hunter Nemechek's in Xfinity, he's wanting to get back to Cup. So this theory that the Legacy Motor Club going to Toyota, it could have cleared a spot for him. So that would mean that there would be malicious intent involved in this whole thing it's definitely a conspiracy theory i will say that it, it is something you can theorize uh don't know if it's true i said what i had to say about the whole situation with noah um but you know staying in in different spirits about it all if you want if you want to get crazy and make conspiracy theories so be it so be it you gotta do what you gotta do i'm sure there's a news article about it somewhere but, uh, yeah, it is a pretty pretty crazy coincidence. It is. I will say that. Definitely something. Thank you for calling, Jackie. I appreciate it. Maybe reconsider rooting for people, you know, like Red Dog, the Road Dog, maybe Bubba, maybe Eric from Billy Madison, Ty Gibbs, Denny Hamlin. They're not all bad people. Food for thought. Now we're going to go to Kenny D., from the Dirty D. Just want to preface this message by saying this is Kenny D from the Dirty D. It's nice seeing guys with some hairs on their chins that can keep it under green flag the last hundred laps. These Saturday races have been something, I'll tell you. At least they're entertaining, though. But Tyler Reddick, you see that 17 car popping bottles in Victory Lane? Could have been you, but you're playing. You see the crew member, I watched it live. He raised his hand up. Nobody cared. He was shitting his pants in pure shitting pantness. Nobody gave a shit. And he says, screw it. We're just going to send it. Nobody will notice. Sends it out there. Didn't even make it four turns. Bah! There it went. 
came down, dude, could you imagine being that guy having one job? We got to get some Navy SEALs in there, bro. You can't be slipping like that. But speaking of slipping, I caught the book slipping this morning. They opened the pre-race odds. I had to hammer some of the stuff where I saw the big edges. But turns out the books caught me slipping on the exit of turn two. Little banana peel action on the 19. And as soon as that happened, I just sold my soul to the nine to five. Kenny D from the Dirty D, I'm out. That was Kenny D from the Dirty D, maybe from the Dirty Discord. He is new to the Discord. Kenny, uh, Kenny's been on playback. He's been on the playback streams with us. Shout out to Kenny for calling. Uh, not shout out to Kenny for betting on Martin Truex. That sucks, bro. We talked about it. That that, that was like minus one hundred and fifty, bro. Like that that's tough. That's tough. It's tough to swallow. Um, the Tyler Reddick deal, though, that is a gigantic problem, and. I'm at a point with it where it's scary to bet on him because you don't know what we're going to get. And, like, Bubba Wallace had these issues, too, last year with his pit crew, if we if you remember correctly, in 2022. So now it's like Tyler's kind of having those things, too. And I was, like, I was saying it on playback earlier uh, during the race, during the stream that we were doing. Just fire them all. Just fire them. Go out there, figure it out. Pull, pull some new blood together. I don't know what it's going to take, but it sucks. I mean, he's on a camera. They had him on video just screaming. Just It's unacceptable, and it is. It truly is unacceptable. I hate that for Tyler Reddick. He deserves better. Get Red Dog, some motherfuckers that whip work on pit road. All right? That's all I have to say. Thank you for calling, Kenny D. Uh, we're going to go now to Steve D from Boston. More East Coast love. Hey, Chase, what's up? It's uh, Steve D. from Boston. I just want to say, Chris Boucher, back to back, baby. Let's fucking go. The mighty Boosh. Shout out to you, Steve D. Good to hear from you. Thank you for calling. Uh, let's move on to our last call of the show. Hasn't called in in a while. One of my favorite guys. One of the oldest Garage Fan members. That we've had, we we've been to races, multiple races where we've sat and watched him with him. He's a he, he's a local favorite in the Discord. You know him as Super NASCAR fan Andrew. Hello, Chase, a Super NASCAR fan Andrew here, live from Michigan, right after the race. Uh, I spent the weekend in uh, Nashville. Uh, for IndyCar, vol volunteering, uh, hoping out in the grandstands uh, down there, which that was fun. I uh, got to see Kyle Kirkwood win. Got to hang out in the honky tonks and everything. And then once then I saw that the NASCAR race got rained out, I'm like, I, I calculated out that I can get a few hours of sleep. And I woke up at 1.30 Central this morning. I got like four hours of sleep and I went to bed at like nine o'clock and got all the way here about an hour before the race. And, uh, and thank you, uh, Lucas, another garage shop fan member, uh, for, uh, letting me use one of his, uh, tickets and, uh, get in there and see the fi final, uh, two thirds of the race today. Uh, Chris Bush again, the win. Uh, Tough wit for Truex, but yeah, uh, but yeah, that was 500 miles from Nashville to Michigan, and I somehow pulled it off. I am tired, but kind of running on adrenaline. Like, like I'm like awake and tired at the same time. It's a strange sensation. Um, but yeah, great, great weekend of racing. Uh, Nashville, Michigan. Awesome. See you later, Chase. Bye. Thank you for calling Super NASCAR fan, Andrew. I totally feel you on that running on adrenaline thing. I've been doing it for four years. I don't really sleep at all. So I'm right there with you. But yeah, when you travel 500 miles, 
you know, like that and do those, th- those are always fun. Th- those are good times. So I'm glad that you're, you're still traveling, you're doing your thing, you're living your life your way. And it's awesome to hear that you got to go to an IndyCar race and a NASCAR race. So you pulled that off. Um, uh, not many people have pulled that off this year. I think that was, uh, one of our guys that we know pulled off the, um, where he went to the Indy 500. Then he got to go to the Coke six cause it was on a Monday. So he got to pull that off. So Andrew, you're like right there with him going from Indy to NASCAR. Beautiful stuff right there, man. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Shout out to Lucas. I love hearing stories like that about the garage fan. People get in the discord. They end up making friends. They go to races he was able to get a ticket from Lucas. It's incredible stuff. Only in the Discord, only with the Garage fam. That's what we do best, baby. We we just we we, we like a a connection. We we a racing connection. I won't do like the finger in the hole cuz it's not sexual. It's just a connection. It's love. You know, it's racing love. Love for racing. That's what it is. Thank you again to everyone that called from here. Obviously, call of the week has to go hands down. I'm going to give it to Cousin Vinny from New Jersey. Just absolute electricity, straightforwardness from the man and the questions. I love that. Keep calling Vinny. Vinny gets called the week. Uh, and now I guess uh, the, the time has come. That's it for me this week on the Garage Guys Report. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Again, congratulations to Mr. July Hunter from Arkansas himself. Great voicemail. Who's going to be Mr. August or Mrs. August? Who's going to be the call of the month for August? You need to get those calls in every week after the races. 919-769-4477 is the number to call. Don't forget to like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Share this video. Go in the comments. Hashtag NASCAR. If you want to win one of five of the NASCAR NBC prize pack, shades, lanyard, koozie, and decal, going to be giving them away. This is where you can win it, right here on the Garage Guys Report. So do all those things, and we'll make it happen. It's been fun. It's been real. We'll see you next time on the Garage Guys Report. Subscribe.